Hi everyone, this video is in response to a comment left on my previous video about why Free Comic Book Day is a really bad idea in my opinion. So the uh, subscriber Crown Scrooge said, how would you save comics? That's an excellent question and uh, most of my videos kind of compare uh, things that were good to uh, how you could uh, do things better now. Uh, whereas my first video was just kind of, <laughs> it was just negative thoughts. So it's a great question to say, how would you save comics? So I'm going to basically uh, keep talking until I run out of uh, space on my phone or somebody calls and interrupts <laughs> my recording, as usually happens. So the first thing you would do, and these are going to be in no particular order, is you need to get comic books back into grocery stores and convenience stores. Now, I know it's not like the kids in Stranger uh, Things in the 1980s. Kids aren't all riding their bikes and climbing trees and outside the house all the time. But you know what? I go to the grocery store every day. That's just a weird personal habit of mine. And I see kids there all the time. No matter when I'm there, before school, during school, slash the workday, after school, I go to the grocery store at 1145 at night. And behind me will be a dad with two kids. They're always there. So you got Archie Comics right there, right at the newsstand. Yeah, they're a smaller digest version, but they're there. So you need to have a digest called Marvel Superheroes, another digest called DC Superheroes. And the thing about this is I've seen little furtive attempts by Marvel and DC to get back into um, grocery stores or convenience stores or Barnes and Nobles, and they usually end up getting stopped as a failure. And the deal is it's going to fail the first couple of years. There's no way it's not going to fail. I I didn't start even looking at comics till I was like, geez, like 10, and I had my whole life gone up seeing them everywhere. And they're not just going to suddenly become popular because they're in grocery stores for a couple of years. They were in grocery stores and convenience stores for 50 or 60 years, and they built up that success over half of a century. So you're not going to get it back right away. You might have to have it in 10 years before it stops losing money or breaking even, but that's the ent that's the entryway to get people into comics, not free comic book day, which is just this weird thing that just happens once a year and it's mainly just gives comics to people who already buy them you need to get kids you need to get them young and you, and you need repeated exposure it, nobody likes coca-cola because they run one advertisement a year you like coca-cola because advertisement is everywhere and it's always being indoctrinated in, into your head so that's the first one out of a totally random list that i don't even know how long is the second one is you need to stop having creators, artists, but mainly writers and editors, insulting and attacking fans on social media. This needs to be a part of the hiring process, and it needs to be a part of the firing process. You know, Dan Slott is a quote-unquote huge writer in the industry, but his books sell between fifteen to 30000 That's really low. So all these guys who are kind of do whatever they want, like, you're, this is not good. The sales are incredibly low. And one of the people things they'll say well it's like well they're doing that in their free time that's their freedom of speech to express themselves yeah but the only reason people are following dan slott is because he works for marvel so him being connected to marvel is literally the only reason anyone pays him any attention so yes he is representing marvel all the time and when most of the geez most of the creators at marvel and not a lot of dc a lot of the image ones when most of them are insulting readers attacking readers blocking them, bragging about blocking them, bragging about using block bots, that's bad. This should be a flat out thing. It's like, hey, you're hired for the X-Men. Uh, I don't want to see you attacking fans ever. I don't want to see you being rude to them ever. If someone says something rude, you need to either use your adult brain and your adult emotions to ignore it and not respond, or you just put them on mute. You put them on mute, they blast you all day, you never see it. Everything's fine. Um, the, ne the next one is, so number one, you need to get back in, in convenience stores and grocery stores. Number two, you need to stop having a creators attack fans. Number three is you need to make comics, which is mainly superhero comics. And it, that's, that's the main thing. That's always going to be the main genre. You, we've tried to make indie comics stick and, and Marvel is the health of the industry. If you don't have a healthy Marvel, you don't have a healthy industry. So Marvel needs to remember what it is. And all Marvel has to do is make, it's funny, the, the movies, the Marvel movies are so successful because they copy the comics 
when the comics were successful. So all the comics have to do is copy the movies. If you go in with big adventure stories, have a solid amount of humor, the comics are, are going to do good. You open, I, remember, I remember this very distinctly, and it was probably about 10 years ago. I bought my son a Spider-Man comic. I was, pretty, I was a student at the time. I was pretty strapped. It's like 350 or something like that. He flips through it for three minutes, and he goes, he goes, I'm done. And I'm like, no, you're not done. You didn't read it. He goes, oh, and there was no Spider-Man in this comic. So I, I got kind of uh, PO'd, so I picked it up. I said, of course there's a Spider-Man in the comic. It's a Spider-Man comic. And no, it was uh, an entire page of um, Peter Parker looking sad in a hospital room while visiting Aunt May. No heroics, barely no action, and barely even talking. You could literally flip through it in three minutes. I'm reading these old comics, oh, old in quotes, from the 80s and 90s, and it takes me 10 minutes to read it. You know, now you can read comics in two minutes. You got to extrapolate. This is going to be to my next one. You can, I can go see a good action movie. I can go see Fate and the Furious at a matinee for six bucks. That's two hours of entertainment. Now I pay four dollars for three to four dollars for a comic, and if it even does entertain me, it's entertaining me for five minutes. It's insane. Which brings me to the next one. You need to be cheaper. Comics came out of cheap pulp paper that was left over after printing presses made newspapers. This, you know, fancy paper, expensive paper, fancy coloring, expensive coloring, that's what's killing it. That's why you can't produce cheap comics. So you need to go back to newsprint and basically flat coloring because you can do that quickly. You could probably sell the books for half as much. Comics, when I was growing up, a comic and a candy bar were pretty much the same price. Now a candy bar is 75 cents to $1.50, and a comic book is 3 to $4. Now it's double. You need to get comic books underneath the level of people not even thinking about it. When you get into $4, people think about it. You get to $2, people will throw $2 down for anything. Um, so you need to get them cheap, which means actually making them cheaper, but that doesn't make, mean making them worse. Those Archie comics are on cheap paper, it's flat coloring, and those things have never left. So um, the next one, and, and this one's, if, if you did all four of those things, if you um, got them back where people are, if you stopped uh, creators from insulting fans, if you uh, used cheaper paper, if you basically used the tone of the movies, which are action adventure with uh, humor, you would uh, take care of most of the things. The other one is to appreciate the audience you have. There's this really weird thing where the comics industry hates that it's a bunch of mainly middle-aged white guys in their stores. But it's not like the days of cholera. You know, like the average lifespan isn't 38 years. People are going to live to be 80 to 100. If you keep comics cheap, you have a customer that will last for 60 more years. You go to any industry and you talk about the loyalty of a fan base and the idea of you're going to throw it away because they're 39. That's insane. Do you know how much money older people have, especially once they get the kids out of the house. I, I, w I was once at a church with a congregation of like 200 people. Pastor said, we need like 2 million to save the church. I was like, oh, this church is gone. Guess what happened three months later? It's like a couple hundred of 65-year-olds were able to cough up 2 million. Old people have money, trust me. And you can read comics until you literally die. So you keep this a cheap hobby, and especially with these longer lifespans, you should never, ever get rid of your for, of your audience for a fandom audience. So the last one is I'll probably bring up like SJW since that's a popular thing to talk about. It's like, do you need to get rid of SJW? Well, I think actually this would get rid of itself. If you maintain, if you get more successful, then you can start saying you can get, you can get a little experimental, but you also need them to hold to higher standards. A Marvel comic selling anything less than 50,000 is absolutely pathetic in this day and age. And I think the average one sells about 25 to 30,000. So if you follow all of the first like six things I said, the whole SJW issue kind of would sort itself out. If you didn't have um, creators who could <laughs> actively insult the fans, they're, they're, people do things that they can get away with. These higher level uh, comic creators, even with these really low sales because of the high price point, 
these guys are making, you know, 80, 100,000, 120,000. They're very cocky. They get it. All of a sudden, you know, you expand it. It's like, hey, you got to work for it. Well, they're going to, you know, get right with Jesus, as they say. They're going to suddenly realize that they don't want a quote unquote real job. So if they just have to suck it up, I'll, I'll do. I think some of them just couldn't. I think some of them would rather be unemployed. There's a lot of just hate, hating the fans. And I'll probably do another video about why pros hate the fans. Um, but um, actually, I thought this was going to be a really long video, and it turned out to not be that long. I'm wrapping it up right now. So tell me what you think. Tell me if comics can be saved. Tell me if these things would save comics. Tell me if comics even deserve to be saved. Uh, leave comments, subscribe, and I'll have another video up tomorrow. Thanks.